This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Quota blame game begins even after it's banned. Karunanidhi says Subramanian Swami is only twisting facts with his. Subramanian Swami is only twisting facts with his. The Chaidi Entirith Pani Interpade Ulla Padiye Maridha Thakade. Five days are not enough to grill A. Raja. The CBI gets a two-day extension of the former telecom minister's custody. A top banker's job remains shocked. Morning joggers of West Bamberam police still to ascertain how it got there. If it was a murder, but the Nilengarai murder case has a breakthrough. A BBA student has been identified as the culprit. A manhunt is on. And for every true blue fan of the Men in Blue, the merchandise have hit the stores. Take home your stuffed favorite. You've tuned into the late night news with me, Evelyn Matthew. Here's our national stories as well. We have not given spectrum to Antrix or Devas. The space organization ISRO clarifies after reports of a huge loss in the deal. It could be back to business in the parliament if the government and the opposition agree. The JTC seems likely. Mayavati security officer cleans her shoes as she continues talking to officials. It's not an issue, says the BSP. And India's speedster S. Srisanth is chosen to replace Pravin Kumar in the World Cup squad. Now, discretion is very much under the limelight in our political stage these days. It seems a day after Janta Party chief Subramanian Swami petitioned the governor seeking sanction to prosecute M. Karunanidhi, the chief minister responded in the assembly today on the discretionary quota. Oh well, I was only following in the footsteps of other regimes, seemed to be the essence of Chief Minister Karunanadi's statement in the Assembly today. Criticised for the allotments under the government discretionary quota, the Chief Minister silenced the main opposition AI-ADMK also in the process. <laughs> Subramaniam Swami's petition to the governor may be a sequel to Chief Minister's legal notice to him demanding retraction of Swami's private complaint in the Delhi High Court linking Karunanadi to the infamous 2G scam. He has violated every rule under that uh, and allotted it to his favoured few and this has become, uh, become very suspicious. It's a corrupt act, it's a violation of Section 11 and 13 of the Prevention Corruption Act. Hence, Mr. Karunanidhi must resign as also he must be prosecuted. However, Karunanadi's statement is unlikely to bring down the curtains on the issue. If anything, the war of words between the DMK chief and Swami may intensify in the state, which is gearing up for a close contest. With Jailalitha backing Swami in the private complaint by Swami in the Delhi High Court, linking the DMK chief to the 2G scam, it may be a while before the issue settles down. Bureau Report, NDTV Hindu. While condemning the Janta Party president, DMK Kadas held a road roko in Vilipuram today and also burnt his effigies as a mark of protest. Well, moving on, Karnataka government's recent act of laying a road and pipelines into the Metur reservoir led to an adjournment motion in the Tamil Nadu Assembly today. Cutting across party lines, leaders of the AIA, DMK and the Congress raised this issue. State Minister Punmuri told the Assembly that the issue is being looked into and an explanation has been sought from the Karnataka government. <laughs> Kavri ni ringgal mahal versi pergi nre, unbud mawat nama kalayum, kavri pergi lirnde, kavri ati lirnde, 
நீர் குடிநீர் பெறுகின்ற கிட்டத்தட்ட பதினைஞ்சு பதினெட்டு மாவட்டங்களை மக்களையும் மிகப்பெரிய வருத்தத்தில் ஆழ்த்திருக்கின்ற தகவலை இந்த சபையினுடைய கவனத்திற்கு கொண்டு வந்து இந்த அரசு கர்நாடக அரசு எடுத்திருக்கின்ற நடவடிக்கைக்கு தடுத்து நிறுத்துவதற்கு என்ன நடவடிக்கை எடுக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறது என்ற தகவலை மாண்புமிகு சட்டப்பேரவைத் தலைவர் மூலமாக இந்த சபையினுடைய கவனத்தை ஈர்த்து அமர்கின்றேன் நீர்வள ஆதாரத்துறை பொறியாளர்கள் மீண்டும் தல ஆய்வு மேற்கொண்டு உடன் விவரங்களை அளிக்கவும் அறிவுறுத்தப்பட்டுள்ளது இந்த பிரச்சனையில் தமிழ்நாட்டின் உரிமையை விட்டுக் கொடுக்காமலும் தமிழக விவசாயிகளின் நலனை பாதுகாத்திடவும் இவ்வரசு முனைந்து செயல்பட்டு வருகிறது குறிப்பாக குடிநீருக்காக தண்ணீர் எடுக்கின்ற உரிமையை காவிரி நடுவர் மன்றம் அளித்திருக்கிறது அந்த அடிப்படையிலே தான் அவர்களுடைய எல்லையிலிருந்து தான் அவர்கள் குடிநீருக்கான அந்த மாதேஸ்வரம் பகுதிக்கான குடிநீரை எடுத்துக் கொண்டிருக்கிறோம் என்று அவர்கள் சொல்லியிருக்கிறார்கள் Well, moving on to the top national story today, there may be some good news for the government on the horizon. The all-party meet called by Pranam Mukherjee to find a way out of the parliament deadlock ended with signs of a thaw. Both the government and the opposition have agreed that the House must run at all costs, with the signs that the government may concede on the JPC demand. The government now appears to be giving in because of the critical budget session that is coming up. The CBI today got a two-day extension of former Telecom Minister A. Raja's custody. The CBI had earlier asked a Delhi court for a four-day extension. Raja has already spent five days in custody. The former minister was arrested on the 2nd of February in connection with the 2G Spectrum scam. Also arrested with him were two men who worked closely when he was the Telecom Minister. Foreign Telecom Secretary Siddharth Bahura and R.K. Chandolia who was once Raja's personal secretary. So with many revelations and claims in the 2G scam cropping up almost every single day, the telecom minister in the NDA regime, Arun Chauri, has slammed Kapil Sibyl and the Justice Party report on the 2G scam, saying that Sibyl is fabricating the whole case only to protect A. Raja. Kapil Sibyl just gives these half-truths out as if he, he is not the advocate even of this government. He is the advocate of Raja and with every press conference that he holds to protect Raja, he implicates the Prime Minister. You are not seeing that. In the first press conference, what did he say? He let it out. No, no, Raja kept the Prime Minister fully informed. In this one, what has he said? That every decision taken by every predecessor of his, and that includes not only me and Pramod Vajan or whatever, it includes Maran and Raja, that these were wrong. If in that case, forget Bajpay, what was Manmohan Singh doing for six and a half years when this loot was going on? That's the question, natural question, and it arises only from Kapil Sibyl's uh, advocacy. Well, moving on to the new Spectrum deal that's really got the government in fresh controversy, ISRO has uh, said today that it had recommended last year that a deal with the private firm called Devas should be scrapped, a process which is still on. ISRO's chief, Dr. K. Radhakrishnan, has denied that any Spectrum was actually allocated. Was the Prime Minister aware of what was really happening with this contract? Sir? See, the contract is finalized by the Antrix board and that's, that stops there. I took up the matter to the Space Commission and subsequently I required decisions from the government for which I have approached the Prime Minister who is our Minister recently after the consultative process that I had to go through within the government. And that is how the Prime Minister's office, they are conveyed today that this process is on. Up ahead on the late night news, a BBA student in the city is tracked down for a murder by the beach. We'll bring you more from that crime story in just a bit.